Hey gang, Scott here. If you've watched my videos before, you, you know that I use uh, several different editing tools to, uh, to do my photography. And the photo I just finished working on is a good example of that, of why I chose to use uh, you know, an additional tool, in this case, one more, to, uh, to get the work done. And so I'm gonna break this down into you know, the different things that I used to shape the light, craft things, get the detail, actually taking you know, this photo here, which is uh, the globals are done, but nothing localized to get to a finished result of this with a lot more ambiance, you know, some more directional lighting, a lot more detail in this uh, very ornate ceiling. One more time from here to here. And uh, this will probably be the first of at least two, maybe three videos to walk through it all. So I wanna keep these relatively tight and uh, each part can be a lesson in and of itself on a style of editing. So we're gonna start with uh, the directional light that I added to to make this, this glow appear through these windows. I did that in Lightroom. So let's uh, get started with that one here in this video. As I just mentioned, this is the base photo. All my basics have been done. These are all the global adjustments. Nothing local has been applied. And the next thing I want to do is you know, add more drama, add, add more you know ambiance by seeing these circular portal windows that are here and imagine you know, they're more of a, a light beam coming in through them you know, and somewhat in the direction of, you know, from the ceiling, which we're looking at, you know, down toward the floor. And of course, in the, in the general direction of the uh, the window like this one here would be kind of coming down from you know toward the lower left corner this one here you know, you know straight down from its portal and so on down the line and uh, I chose to do this in Lightroom using masking I'll do this for a couple of windows and uh, then I'll show you the the final results you don't have to watch me do like you know five or six windows here but to give you an idea of the technique uh, how I chose to approach it and uh, what uh, adjustments I did to uh, to kind of boost that ambiance well, let's grab our masking tools. We know we're going to use masking. And the shape of the mask that I ultimately want, if you could imagine kind of a, um, a long oval that cuts off at the bottom of the photo that covers the center part of the window. That's where I want it strongest. A little bit of bleed toward the top, but then casting downward. So nothing bleeding up toward the top. And so thinking about how to do this, um, you know, a, um, a radial would be nice, except I would need to center the radial here because I want the most intense beam to be here, and um, or the intense light, I should say. And uh, that's a little bit of a challenge with a radio because this would be like extending all the way up here and coming down. So the approach I chose to use is a couple of linear gradients and then a little bit of brushwork. So let's go ahead and do this here. So we'll get the linear gradient and I'll add one to the photo. Now this is where I'm going to be adding, right? So if I say I want, uh, I want a kind of a healthy feather, let me position this over here. So red is where things are gonna be affected. And so roughly saying, okay, here, is the the edge of this portal maybe angle it so it's kind of following this arch line here and not too diffuse of a of a, a filter or a filter of a feather I want it a, you know reasonably sharp because I want this to simulate or uh, imagine there being more of a beam of light so something like that okay so that's the first side now the second thing is let's add actually, sorry, subtract another linear gradient. And we'll do the, the opposite over here. So you're getting the idea now, right? So I've got this, this beam coming in, something like that, right? A little bit of a feather, a little bit of a fade off, but it's, it's reasonably crisp. And now we have to deal with, with the top part. Well, a simple one there is just the brush, right? We'll do a subtract with a brush. Uh, full strength, full opacity, nice and big. And I'll have the feather, a little, maybe a little hard to see on the screen, but where I have the edge of the feather is kind of like right above the main circular area of the window. I'm going to point right now and not paint. So I'm going to have the feather kind of hug the edge of, of that, uh, that sweep there. And then I'm just going to go once over like that. And now the rest is easy to erase something like that and maybe a little cleanup now we'll do a little just this is more you know to taste but a little cleanup like that what are the adjustments we certainly raise exposure so i'll push it really far so you can see what's happening now right now i'm getting this 
this kind of beam of light, right? And let's dial that back to you know, something like like this. And shadows, contrast. Let's increase the contrast because I don't want to lose some of the detail there. So a little boost in the contrast. Raise the shadows a little bit. And that's going to be more for the, the part down at the bottom beneath the window. So something like that. Now, uh, a finishing touch for this because this increase in exposure I've lost a little bit of the detail on the undersides of the the archways or the I don't know what to call them like the you know this this it's almost like a window sill I guess this sill just goes all the way around so one more time with a brush subtract and I'll just reduce the flow to about half and then a gentle sweep through here and another gentle sweep a little smaller brush through here okay and now I have this window accent before and after and I can dial in the strength you know how much of that glow do I really want and that's why I push the sliders a little hard because we have this amount control at the very end so something around there maybe a little maybe a little bit more that feels pretty good before and after now I want to repeat this for the other windows I'll leverage the mask. I'll copy and paste it, mainly so I have the, the linear gradients. They're just there, and I can reposition them. The brushwork, that's going to be custom for each window. And there's a reason I'm going to do each window separately, which I'll explain a little bit. So let's just call that window number one. Actually, I guess that would really be window number two. If I want to go from left to right, <laughs> one on the far edge I haven't done yet, that'd be window number one. Uh, so to do the second window, and so on down the line, I'll do one more here. We'll duplicate this. That way, I've got the same settings. And now I just say, I don't need the brush. Let's delete that. I don't need that brush for now. I'll, I'll worry about that in a minute. Linear gradient one will take you and position you over on the second window. Once again, kind of using the edge of that arch as our, as our guide. Now for this one, if this was coming you know, down into the chamber, it probably, probably about like that. And then linear gradient number two will take you, bring you over here. And let me turn on the overlay so I can see what we're working with more cleanly because I have adjustments applied now. You know, normally the, uh, the overlay disappears. So something like that. And now we'll go grab our brushes. We'll subtract with a brush, full strength, do that same thing where the the edge of the feather hugs the edge of the archway, and then we'll just get rid of the rest of the stuff at the top. And then a second brush, about half strength, so we don't wash out too much the details that are inside the window itself, because those are really nice details to have. Okay, turn off that overlay. Let's call that window number three. And this is why I wanted each window individual. I can start to play games and say, okay, I want a little more brightness here. Go back to window two, a little less brightness, and so on down the line. And so repeating this for the other windows that are, uh, are in this, uh, this chamber, let me jump to uh, the, the, the another photo here where I've got those, all those windows in place. And so you can see which ones I did and the direction that they came in. So I end up doing the four windows. There's window two and three we did together. Window four, you can see that here. That's kind of cascading in from right to left. And then I did a little accent on window one. I chose not to do this fifth one. Uh, there's really you know a downward beam. There's nowhere for it to go and shine. And I don't want a bright object right at the edge of the photo, you know, taking attention away from ultimately the ornate ceiling that I want you to pay attention to. So um, you know, a little artistic license chose not to do that. But you know, to to see each one of those in turn, right? You know, window one, very subtle, right? You'll see it's a very low amount. So I don't want too much attention drawn to that edge, but there was enough window there and enough material to be lit. It's like, okay, that one needs to be there. Window two, that's the big bright one. We can see I actually ended up pushing the amount higher and I went back to my brushes and just you know clean them up. I ended up doing everything with a single brush and 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 reducing this here. So it was you know full erase up at the top and then lowered the 
fit or the flow and did some parts in here, single brush. Window three, lit that one up. And then window four, that one also quite bright, pushed up high. So I, I kind of you know did this crisscross here of, of this beam and this beam being the more important ones. Adding that up, we got to here. And the next things that I really want for the photo is more detail. And there is, uh, you know, there are ways to do that in Lightroom for sure. Clarity, uh, contrast, texture, and I've already added those things globally, and I've I've gotten things you know pretty pretty far with that. But uh, instead of trying to you know, wrestle with uh, with Lightroom, I'm going to reach for other tools. And on one has dynamic contrast. I know that's going to give me the kind of pop that I want. So that's really my next step for this photo. And I think I'll do that as a separate video because there's there's a couple of things I'm going to fiddle with in on one. A couple of filters there to get this detail pop. So uh, let me close this video out here. This is the you know illuminating light, making these window uh, you know types of uh, directional light beams in Lightroom. Um, you know, again, the, the, the difference being before and after, and it's coming together. I think before I jump over to On One, I'll probably do a little vignetting along the top and the bottom. So I really focus attention here in this brighter area. But then once we get into On One, we're going to see all of this ornate work really jump out. So I uh, hope you stick around and, and watch the other portions of these, uh, this uh, like this little mini micro series on this particular photo. You got questions about what I've done in Lightroom or you know uh, another you know ask of you know, well how would I do it if I wanted to use a, a different masking tool? You know drop them in the comments and uh, I'll do my best to reply. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.